Well, the first night I came in here in June of uh, 1983, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. Obviously, it was a big decision that the party took to contest the elections. I was the first Republican to come in here. And obviously, whilst we had two members of People's Democracy and a member of the IRSP in here since 81, Sinn Féin coming in here was fundamentally different because that was signalling that the party was, uh, for the first time, uh, going to make a big impact, or at least going to hope to make a big impact on the politics of this city in terms of Belfast City Council, challenging the kind of sectarianism that this place was renowned for, and basically getting on to expand our representation of the people in this city. I wasn't sure at all what to expect to come in, when I came in that night, but I was very conscious that it was a big uh, responsibility to take on, and I was pleased to have that opportunity, but I was just sensitive to how people in Belfast would look, certainly the Republicans in Belfast, how they would perceive uh, my first night here. There have been a, quite a considerable debate going on between Republicans for some number of years and that debate really came to head after the hunger strikes elections, um, certainly in terms of Bobby Sands' election and the impact that that had and even Kieran Doherty and Joe McDonald's elections in the South. Um, that actually accelerated the discussion within Republicanism to the point where Sinn Féin took a very historic decision to change policy of abstentionism in regard to local government. Um, the first opportunity we had to put that into place in Belfast was in a by-election in 1983 and I was uh, chosen as the party candidate uh, on the view that you know, I would come in here in 1983 uh, to prepare the ground for what we would hope would be a bigger team in the general council elections in 1985. But the context of the time was it was a very volatile period in our uh, history. Uh, the conflict was raging kind of quite uh, strongly uh, in the aftermath of the hunger strikes where 10 people died in the prisons. You know, a lot of people died on the streets as a result of that and uh, against that backdrop. So it was a very violent period, a very difficult political period, but it was one in which republicanism was uh, becoming resurgent again after the uh, kind of lean period in the 1970s and the late 70s. So it was a very important time for Republicans and it was a very important departure in terms of politics that we were deciding to enter uh, Belfast City Council and indeed other councils around the north. Major decision taken and it was important that we took the right decisions to put uh, you know, candidates in the councils that could actually stand the ground against what undoubtedly would be a lot of opposition and there was a lot of opposition to uh, you know, Sinn Féin involvement in local politics by people either who were unionists who were dead against us anyway or indeed other nationalists who didn't want to see their territory encroached upon by this what they considered in my view rightly to be a radical party coming in the local government to shake up local government in a way which it had not been done uh, in many 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 years. Well, it's interesting when you look around the precincts of Belfast City Hall today, you see all of the welcome signs and uh, the place is much more, even within the environment here, much more welcoming. There's no question about that. And I think we have been very significantly a part of delivering on that. But certainly back in 1983, there was no such welcome uh, on the mat for uh, hardly the nationalist community at all, never mind a Sinn Féin councillor. The kind of whole environment here was for the most part hostile, although over the years we managed to break a lot of that down. People could see that you're in here, you're in here for the long haul. Uh, Sinn Féin coming in here wasn't going to be a flash in the pan. It was a, a clear strategy decision that the party had taken. We were in here to represent the people of the city as a whole as best we could do. We were certainly going to break down the sectarian barriers that were here and make Belfast City Council a place which was actually delivering for all of the people on a basis of equality and that was what we set ourselves a target of actually doing. Um, but that came at a very high cost, breaking all that sectarianism down and whilst that is not yet a completed task, nevertheless we have made I think a big, big, big dent in that kind of wall or that edifice of sectarianism which this council here represented uh, for many, many decades. Um, I've already mentioned the fact that you know when you try to uh, make a contribution at a committee level or in the council chamber, very often you were barracked, you were prevented from speaking, or at least people tried to prevent you from speaking, and there were very often physical and certainly verbal altercations even within the council chamber, and indeed the council became renowned as a bear pit, as it was called then in the local media. But of course on the outside of the council chambers, very much as a result of all of that uh, demonisation, uh, our party suffered a huge price in this city alone. 
you had people like Bobby Lowry and other councillors here, some was shot dead in, in his own home, and brothers had also been, been murdered by uh, loyalists. We had the home of Joe Austin's uh, bombed in an attack on Joe and the country, Jeremy Wigan and Ardoin. Other councillors were routinely harassed and arrested and my own home was attacked. People like Alan Lundy uh, tragically lost his life in my home. Um, so, you know, there was a big focus of uh, targeting our members, both in terms of marginalising us, trying to rep suppress us here in the likes of Belfast City Council and on the streets. Um, but all of that there, we, with the rest of our community, resolutely, you know, stood by and uh, were not going to be suppressed and we were not suppressed, as I've said, to the point where now Sinn Féin re represents the largest number of people in Belfast and I think that that's a tremendous tribute to the courage of the people who not only stood for election here and who were elected but also the party who sent us in here and probably more importantly the people who elected us election after election to make us now the largest party in Belfast. Well, in 2002, um, I was elected Mayor of Belfast, and obviously, wise, that was a very important and personal honour to be in that position and a great privilege. More importantly, it actually represented a very, very important symbolic breakthrough for not only the nationalist people of this city, but indeed, I think, all of the people of this city, because it did represent a big, big departure from what had happened previous. As I've said, uh, earlier on and as well recorded. I mean, Sinn Féin came in here and I came in as the first councillor and the single councillor on behalf of the party in 1983. By the year 2002, we were able to have a, a mayor elected uh, from within our party. And we obviously uh, signalled very clearly from the outset of that term that we were determined to enshrine equality in everything that we did. We were determined to prove that the Mayor of Belfast should be a Mayor for all of the people, that the City Council should be a civic leader, the Mayor should be a civic leader representing that, that it should be a very inclusive office and that it should be leading the way in the City as opposed to being a bit player, which very often the Council had been because it had marginalised itself because of its sectarianism, its pettiness over the years and its failure to be an inclusive council and recognise the rights of people right across the city. So, in my opinion, we broke through all of that. Uh, we did that against many, many obstacles, including from other so-called nationalists who were here, who more often said it with the unionists, never mind uh, working with themselves to bring about equality in here. So the mayor uh, election in 2002, which had a Sinn Féin elected as a mayor, was a very important breakthrough for people here. And I think this council has not looked back since that time because it has been more open and more inclusive. In fact, we've had uh, Tom Hartley, uh, another Sinn Féin member elected in recent years. We have had uh, our party now who are able to take up, as of right, their positions as chairs of all of the committees. We have represented this council at every level of civic life in Belfast. We have represented this council in uh, all levels of Europe, in the US and in the broader international community. And I think we have consistently been in a position to give good, positive civic leadership on the day-to-day -day issues, which is about trying to develop job creation and nations within the Bill of City Council and more importantly treating all of the people of Belfast as an equal citizen and that was never done uh, in my opinion in any way albeit some people may have tried to make little efforts over the years but certainly until Sinn Féin put a focus on this, put a focus on breaking down sectarianism, making the council more inclusive, respecting the rights of everybody in the city, until we did that on a sustained basis that, that has never been achieved and clearly there's a lot of work yet to be done. Well, sometimes it's hard to reflect on the fact that I've been here 27 years, uh, but I do think that that is just a reflection, and you can trace the history of the growth of republicanism throughout that last 27 years. I came in here in 1983 as the first Sinn Féin councillor. I was told by other experts, so-called, that uh, Sinn Féin's involvement here would be short-lived to be a flash in the pan. We went on to be the largest party in Belfast, and still are. Um, I became the first uh, Sinn Féin MLA in South Belfast again, signifying the continuing growth of republicanism in Belfast, something that I'm very, very proud to be a part of. I am really looking forward to next year's elections when, again, we will be coming forward in Belfast City Council, new team, refocused, making sure that we finish the job that we're here to do, which is to bring full equality uh, to the people of Belfast, 
continue my work as Assembly Representative in South Belfast, whether well, that's as a member of the Policing Board, working to hold the Police and ID account, shaping policing in the future as a new police service for all the people away from the kind of dark days of the REC in the past, or whatever other role I'll have in the Assembly if the people continue to give me their accomplishments by giving me their, their vote in uh, next year's election. So I look forward to next year because I am totally confident that we will continue to see the growth of the Sinn Féin and republicanism throughout this city, length and breadth of it, and it's great to be a part of that.